Hey guys, Mike Shikashio with AggressiveDog.com. Today I'm going to be talking to you about everything you've ever wanted to know about dog muzzles. There's basically three different things I look for in recommending a muzzle to a pet owner. The first thing is comfort for the dog. I'm looking for the dog to be able to eat and drink, pant, yawn, and even vomit if they have to through the muzzle. The second thing I'm looking for is safety for whoever and whatever the dog is trying to go after. And the third thing, since I'm using, often using food a lot in my aggression cases, is to be able to feed food through the muzzle, whether it's using a food tube or feeding treats through the muzzle. There's basically six different kinds of material used for muzzles. There's rubber, there's metal, there's plastic, leather, Biothane, which is a polyester webbing covered with PVC coating, and there's vinyl. So I'm going to go through what I typically recommend and go through the different types of muzzles and what you should look for when picking out a muzzle for your own specific case. So the first one, which I recommend most often, is the Baskerville Ultra Muzzle. This is a rubber muzzle. It's very lightweight. It's very comfortable for most dogs to wear it. Uh, it's also very safe, so it meets a lot of the criteria I'm looking for in a good muzzle. When you get this, save the box, because when you're doing conditioning, and it's very important to acclimate a dog to a muzzle, you don't want to just put one on and hope they get used to it. It's, it's important to acclimate it correctly. You can find a video of that on my YouTube channel. But when you save the box, you can basically use it for a food bowl by putting spray cheese or peanut butter or all this other soft food in there. You can wrap it with wax paper and basically make a food bowl out of this. But that'll, that'll help you a lot with the conditioning process when you're getting your dog used to wearing the muzzle. So the Baskerville has, you get it, a neck strap with a buckle collar here that goes around the neck. And you have a top strap. This is called a forehead strap or a third strap, which goes through one of the holes in the neck strap there. And that allows for you to, it helps to prevent the dog from pawing it off the top of their nose. And you also have this second additional neck strap here, which this will allow you to feed a flat buckle collar through, or you can attach a mountain climbing carabiner and attach that through the ring of the collar uh, so the dog can't pull it off from underneath. Now when you're looking at the fit for these collars or these muzzles is you're looking to make sure that it's not sitting in the dog's eyes when you put it on. So, so there should be a little bit of space there underneath the eyes. You don't want it riding up into the eyes like that. You actually want to have it sitting on the uh, ridge of their nose like that. The neck strap should go around the neck. and this top strap would come over the top. Now you should have a little bit of space underneath the bottom jaw of the dog and the bottom of the muzzle because if it's too tight, they're not gonna be able to open their mouth. So you want them to be able to open their mouth and breathe. Um, and so that's why that you want a little bit of space underneath there. Their nose should be coming out through this part and you can feed treats through this area of the muzzle. If you need to, you can boil these in hot water and shape them down and hold them in place to get a little more precise fit with this particular model. Now, one little side note on these muzzles. I've got a new Baskerville here. I've got an older style Baskerville here. If you look at the difference, you can see this one has a center bar there in the front. This one does not. Now, the problem with these is that dogs could still bite with just the front teeth through this older model. So if you have one of these or have some of these laying around, get rid of them and go with the newer models so you have that additional safety there. Next up on the list is the Boomas muzzle. This is a newer muzzle to the market in the US. And I love these because they're customizable. So if you have a brachycephalic breed or a dog that has a short snout or a long snout, they will custom fit these muzzles based on measurements you send them. Excellent customer service. They'll get back to you with getting them, making sure you get the right size. I love that it gets rid of that Hannibal Lecter effect that some of the other muzzles uh, kind of have in just an all black color. You can customize these in any kind of color or configurations you like. They're very lightweight and breathable. 
and there's a lot of options as far as configuring these muzzles. There's this extra forehead strap that's available. You also have the clip option here, and you can get these in either clip option or buckle option, which I love. Uh, when you have the buckle option straps, it allows you to adjust for things like growth in the dog, um, weight gain or weight loss issues, or dogs that might uh, uh, be shaved down uh, with coats, their coats, so you're going to be having different sizes on the neck. So lots of different options on these. They also send you a kit to add the screws and make sure they're secure using super glue. And that'll make sure that the actual screws are set in place once you have the correct fit for your dog. So, wonderful uh, muzzle. Highly recommend these. Next up on the list is the Jafco muzzle. This is a plastic muzzle. These are excellent for, I find some of the longer snout breeds do well in these. They do have the treat hole in the front, which makes it easier to treat uh, dogs um, with that muzzle on. Um, they have the buckle strap here. And these also do come in an option with the forehead strap. Um, one thing you can do, so sometimes with some of these muzzles, it's hard to get treats through, such as the Boomas. They do, Boomas, by the way, does make it with less uh, straps in the front if you like. But you can use different things like pastry tubes, old pastry tubes, or food tubes. You can even use one of these guys, which I like. You can, once the honey's gone, rinse it out and put some other concoction in there, some sort of soft dog food. And you've had that added benefit of not having it go all over the place while you're working with your dog, being able to shut it like that. And you can feed that easily through most of these muzzles. Next up, we have metal muzzles. I typically don't use metal muzzles often uh, if you're doing protection work or protection sports or police work or military work, you're going to be using different types of metal muzzles or metal muzzles that are much more secure than the average pet owner. So if you're doing that type of work, certainly I would recommend going with a safer uh, muzzle in that regard. If you have a dog that is having issues with handling, so they don't like people reaching around their head or even their owners reaching around and buckling collars or fidgeting with things around their head, you can go with one of the quick clip options, which is one of these style muzzles. And that allows you to get it on fairly quickly. You're going to sacrifice a little safety because these do not come with the forehead strap. So there's a risk of some dogs being able to haul that off. Um, but you can uh, modify these and cut a couple of those bars out on the front. Here's one that I didn't cut out. Here's one that has been cut. You can cut a couple of those bars to create that treat hole if you like. Moving on, we're going into vinyl muzzles. This is a new one to the market. Canine Friendly makes this one and uh, it's got a forehead strap as well. Uh, so this I would, I've, I've talked to other trainers who've used this and they love it for the dogs that have no ridge at all. So there's nothing for the, for the muzzle to sit on at all. So a dog, a brachycephalic breed, and you can see in this picture how it works. How it fits on that dog. You can feed through this as well. Um, I would not recommend these for long-term use because you're going to sacrifice some of the comfort and breathability and of course brachycephalic breeds we want them to be able to breathe readily so uh, good for a short-term visit. Speaking of which, some of you out there might be asking, thinking about what about this kind of muscle? These I do not recommend for any kind of long-term use or training. If you're in a, an emergency situation or a veterinary setting um, and you need to get a muzzle on quickly for a short duration, these are appropriate. But you never want to use these in a context for training or any kind of long-term situation, long-term muzzling, because the dog cannot do all of those things I talked about in the comfort. They can't drink and eat. Um, they may be able to eat a little bit or drink a little bit with, if the muzzles fit a little bit more loosely, uh, but definitely not something you want to use for the long term. So that's my little tutorial on muzzles. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook at Aggression in Dogs. Thanks, we'll see you next time.